River City Church. We're glad everybody that is here today is welcoming you online. Those of you watching, we just welcome you. This beautiful summer day, it finally feels like summer after last week. I was like, what is going on? And then this week it warmed up, and now I'm like, man, I almost missed those days, not quite. But, you know, all the guys were teasing me this morning because I was all up here last week ready to go, and they're like, it's not your day. Go sit down. I felt like I got benched. <laughs> I slowly walked down the back of the pew like, ugh. Got benched. <laughs> it was. I was heartbreaking. <laughs> but, you know, and it's like I had something that had to do with Memorial Day and, and remembrance. And, you know, so I was like, oh, I'm ready to go. So I kept thinking of something new, you know. And I was really struggling all week with something to give. And I'm like, Lord, like, what's going on? And it's like, I didn't tell you to change <laughs> what I had for you to say. So. It's going to be Memorial Remembrance, in case you're wondering, there's a little backstory behind it. It's not that, you know, it's just what God laid in my heart, and it was still there for this week, so that's, that's what we're getting. <laughs> so, you know, the Old Testament, uh, altars were often built. You know, when we think of altars, the first thing we think of is sacrifice. You know, we think of sacrificing at the temple, at the tabernacle, you know, that's what comes to our mind when we think of altars you know but that's not always the case you know sometimes God ordered altars to be built for remembrance you know sometimes he had them built when something special took place or miracle took place he said build me an altar so that when people see this you can tell them of the great deeds that I've done and one of those times that it happened is in Joshua 4 1 through 7 it says when a whole nation had finished crossing the Jordan the Lord said to Joshua said, choose 12 men from among the people, one from each tribe. Tell them to take up 12 stones from the middle of the Jordan, from right where the priests are standing, and carry them over with you, and put them down at the place where you stay tonight. So Joshua called together the 12 men he had appointed to Israel, one from each tribe, and he said to them, go over. He said, go over. Each of you take up a stone on his shoulder, according to the number of the tribes of Israel, to serve a sign as among you. I skipped a spot. Oh, sorry. My papers are flying around up here. I'm going to restart reading this here. It says, the whole nation had finished crossing the Jordan. He said, choose 12 men from among you, one from each tribe. Tell them to take 12 stones from the middle of Jordan, from right where the priests are standing. Carry them over with you and put them down at the place where you have stayed at night. So Joshua called together the 12 men he had appointed from Israel. One from each tribe, and he said to them, Go over before the ark of the Lord your God in the middle of Jordan. And each of you is take up a stone to his shoulder according to the number of tribes to serve as a sign among you. And in the future when your children ask, What do these stones mean? Tell them that the flow of the Jordan was cut off before the ark of the covenant before the Lord. When they crossed the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off. And these stones are to be a memorial to the people of Israel forever. Amen. So we see stones are taken from the middle of the, the river while the actual miracle was taking place. Um, it says they took the stones from the priest, right around the priest's feet while they were on dry ground, put this down, built this altar. God said, build this altar in remembrance. Make this a memorial. You know, the children are going to ask, well, what do these stones mean? And you can tell them to look and remember what the Lord did this day. You know, I think that's something that we all need to do in our own lives. You know, we need to build altar of remembrances in our lives for what the Lord has done. You know, he healed my body. You place a stone down and say, thank you, Lord. You know, he provided me in this situation that there was you know, no way out, but he, he provided this for me. You put down a stone for that. You know, he saved my soul. You know, put a stone down for that. <laughs> I'm flying everywhere. I need paperweight here. <laughs> I'll hold him here. Um, you know, we need to build that. You know, place that stone. God says, remember what I've done. You know, I can imagine him talking to the Israelites, telling them, you know, I parted the Red Sea and you walked on dry ground. Mm -hmm. I did the same thing at the Jordan. You know, I guided you 40 years in the desert with a pillar of fire and a pillar of cloud to keep you safe. You know, your clothes, your sandals never wore for 40 years. Look what I did. You know, I see God telling us today. You know, he says, I saved you. You know, I changed your mind. I changed your body. I made you a new creation. Yeah. I provided for you. I did all these things. You need to remember who I am. Mm -hmm. I broke that chain. 
You know, I saved you from that sin and enslavement. Remember, remember, remember. You know, and each time we can place down that stone to the Lord and look back upon and remember what he did in our lives. You know, but God showed me something else as I was looking at this. Is, you know, we build those altars so that we don't forget. You know, but those altars aren't just for remembrance. You know, I think they're also there for us to look upon for encouragement. You know, look to see it's not just what God did, but what God is going to do. You know, Hebrews 13, 8 says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You know, we serve an unchanging God. We serve an everlasting God. You know, we can look at those stones and know that if God did it before, then God's going to do it again. You know, God says that I don't change. I heal then, I heal now. I provided then, I provide now. You know, I led you then, I lead you now. I never left and forsake you. I'm never going to leave and forsake you. You know, and I'll close with this. You know, Moses, he asked God, when the people ask, who sent me? What's the name of this God that sent me to free them? What do I tell them? You know, God said, Yahweh. You know, that means I am who I am. You know, we sing that song, The Great I Am. You know, he is the great I am. What he's not, he's not the great I used to be. He's not the great, uh, you know, I'm, it's not the great I was. It's not the great I used to be. It's not the great, that's how I was in the Old Testament. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He still is the great I am. The Lord says, if you need a provider, he says, I am. He says, I need a healer. God says, I am. I need a savior. God says, I am. So no matter what you're going through, you can look to God, and he says, I am. You know, and it's safe to say that everyone in this room has needs of God in some way, some way today. You know, but as we worship today, I want you to just think about some stones that you could place down for remembrance. Think about what God has done in your life and thank him for those things. You know, but as we're going through those things today, not just look back and remember, but we can praise him for knowing what he's going to do. We can look at those altars of remembrance know that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and that he is the great I am. So whatever you need this morning, just bring it to God, because his answer is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and it's I am. Heavenly Father, we just thank you today, Lord. We thank you for the many, many blessings that you've given each and every one of us in this room. Lord, we thank you that you are an unchanging God, that we always know who you are, where you are, what you are, Lord, that you are the same today, yesterday, and forever. Lord, we just praise your holy name that you are the great I am, that no matter what we're going through, we know that we have an answer in you, Lord. Lord, we know that we can't, but we know that you can. Lord, as we thank you for the things that you've done, Lord, but we thank you even more so for the things that are yet to come. Lord, we just stand here in faith and in expectancy today, Lord that you will meet our needs, that your spirit will be here, Lord. You know what each person is at. You know what each person needs, Lord. We just thank you, praise you for how you're going to touch our lives today, Lord, that we may not leave the same way that we came in. Lord, I just pray you bless this worship, Lord. You bless this message. Let your spirit come into this place. Anoint all those involved, Lord. Just prepare our hearts, prepare our ears, minds, and our spirit, Lord. We just give you all the praise and glory. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. Stand together, please. Amen. Oh Lord, oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic. 
Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of the King rise among us. Let it rise. Let the songs of the Lord rise among us. heavy on my heart that you know we come here and 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 I'm guilty of this even this morning you know where we get tired we get laid back and I just feel like God is saying in my spirit you want me to move are you moving and so let's get excited Let's get excited that he's here this morning. He's with us. We don't come here to an empty building. We come here 
as a church. We are the church. The people are the church. Not the walls, not the ceiling, the floor. We are the church. So we come here and we expect him to move. Are we going to move? And I just feel like God's really strong in my spirit right now telling me we need to move. And I'm just saying that to me too this morning especially. But let's get excited because he is here. And we are not promised tomorrow. We may not be able to praise our great and mighty God tomorrow, but we can praise him this morning. So let's get excited. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of the King rise among us. Let it rise. Let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the joy of the King rise among us. Let it rise. Oh, let it rise. Oh, let it
God, I just ask you to bless this day. I pray, Lord, that we just understand how much you love us. I pray that we really fully understand what you've done for us and what you do for us each and every day that we live. I just praise you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. Let the poor man say, I am rich in him. Let the lost man say, I am found in him. Oh, let the dead man say I am born again oh let the river flow oh let the river flow The lost man say, I am found in him.
his name.
say the name again, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Jesus. Once more. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for hearing us. Thank you for entering in to our praise and our worship this morning, Lord God. Thank you that you are a God that does desire to bless your people, Lord God. But, Father God, we thank you that you do care. Just as Greg prayed, you care about every aspect of our lives, spirit, soul, and body. And you desire to bring wholeness and healing to your children. But just as Debbie said, we have to make a step. <laughs> you know, you supernaturally work, but we have to make a step forward. You don't drag us there. We have to go. So, Lord God, I pray that if anybody has a need this morning, they come. They come to you with open arms, with open hearts to receive. Because your gifts are free. <laughs> your gifts are free. And we thank you that you are always there with arms open. But again, we have to come. So, Lord, work in our hearts. Draw us by the Holy Spirit that we can, can receive those good and perfect gifts that you have for us. And we give you all praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, good morning. Amen. 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 Yes. Say good morning to your neighbor. All right. All right. Doesn't it feel nice and cool in here? And we want it to stay that way. And so you see down at the bottom, um, there's that church building um, projects. And two things is a new furnace and air conditioning for the church. Um, we have one that functions and was replaced, what, a couple years ago? Yeah. What? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then we have, we have need of another one that's limping along and will probably not survive. So we want to replace that before it gets too hot again. So... You see that we have need for that. Also, windows for the youth center. I don't know if, you know, if you know, well, probably a lot of you, if you live around here, you have block windows in your homes, which we do. And so, you know, the block windows that are down in the youth center have been, several of them are broken. And maybe they're not even there anymore and replaced with cardboard or wood. So we want to replace those. So, again, the need is like $7,000. 
and we already have 3160. Woohoo! But guess who has the rest of the money? You do. So um, just pray and ask God, you know, because again, you can never outgive God. You know, if you give to Him, He always blesses you. You know, always blesses you. So again, please make sure that you do that. On the back side, um, nursery ministry, if you're interested in helping to a nursery on Sunday mornings, see Gina or call the office, okay? And as far as it says that you must have a clearance, we will provide those for you, help you get that provided. So again, your scheduling would be every six weeks, so it's not like you got to do it every Sunday. It's just once every six weeks. So please, you know, many hands make light work. And um, I take it from the one that's been in the nursery for, you know, 40 years and probably even longer before I even had kids and then done kids' ministries. You know, it's tough. You know, you don't want to be out of the service. I get it. You know, I get it. But you also want to be able to serve your brothers and sisters who have the need, you know, because it's nice for them to be able to come and enjoy without having your kids pulling at you. So, again, it's a ministry. It's a ministry. We're ministering to the kids, you know, pouring God's love on them. So it's a wonderful ministry for, the, for, uh, for you to do. You know, if you don't know what to do, sometimes you just got to try things so you can see. Um, I'm really excited because this Wednesday starts our series on The Chosen, the movie The Chosen. We're going to be showing season one. Come and see. Come and see. It's an amazing. I've watched this. I've watched season one probably four or five times. Um, and it's just such a blessing. It changed my life as far as viewing Jesus. So if you have not seen it, come. And you will be blessed. Believe you me, you will be blessed. And I saved the best for last. Okay? Uh, River City Church, I'm, uh, I started, I went through a course for the last year on mental health coaching and am in the midst of biblical counseling. And, um, you know, God just told me back when I talked with um, the person that was orchestrating this that this was a ministry for Glassport. So, um, you know, I'm starting this ministry, and um, you, if we've been posting it on Facebook and Instagram, and I've been sharing it, but, you know, it's also word of mouth. So if you are interested, please see me, or go on our Facebook page, because that's how you can schedule a time, is there's a, a link there that you can go to. But also, um, if you know somebody, Please, you know, let them know. You know, it's not going to be a full-time gig for me, but, you know, I do have specific times. But, again, the need is there. When we just prayed for need, people have needs. You have needs. I have needs. We've all, I'm going to be honest, I've gone to counseling before, you know. So we need that, you know. And sometimes it's just, let's have somebody listen that has no judgment you know it's a no judgment zone just like planet fitness you know no judgment zone and that's the important thing so if you have a need you know covid that's all we've heard mental you know how the you know it's it's mentally affected people you know and i know uh, talking to others in the counseling you know ministries they said they're just you know bombarded with people all because of covid so again if you have you know, somebody that you know or yourself, please see me or, again, see, go on Facebook. Like I said, it's posted on uh, church Facebook, right? Wherever Debbie went. Debbie, right? It's posted on there. I know I've, you know, clicked on it and shared it. Um, and you can go on my Facebook feed, and I'm sure it'll be there. But you can schedule a time. So, all right. Praise God. Yes.
Well, let's pray for Anthony right now. You know, that's what we're here for, to lift our brothers and sisters up to. Father God, we pray for Anthony right now. Lord God, your word says that you, we can send forth the word and it healed them. So we're sending forth the word of God that says, by your stripes that you took when you went and died and the blood that Greg just prayed about, Lord God, we are healed. And Lord God, that healing can be mind, body, and spirit. So, Lord God, we're asking you to touch Anthony's mind right now in the name of Jesus. Bring complete clarity, Lord God. You can do what doctors and medications and other things cannot do. We do agree with those things when they come in context and we do follow them. But, Lord, we know that you're the great physician. You are Jehovah Rapha, the God that heals. So, Lord God, we also heard from Jesse this morning, you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we know you've touched Anthony before, Lord God. And so what you did before, you can do again. And we're claiming that healing right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. You know, we're a church of faith. And what I mean by that is that we've already... We've already scheduled for the furnace and the air conditioner, and we've also scheduled for the windows. We're going to do that Monday. And so we're people of faith believing that God will supply whatever is left over. So just, you know, hallelujah. So we're just trusting God, and God is good. Um, praise the Lord. I have a strong word for us this morning, and so I just really believe that we need to uh, just begin in prayer. Father, uh, just bring this word to you. Father, I know it's something you laid upon my heart, things that I've been going through, things that I've been living out in my own life and experience. And I know that uh, I'm just uh, one, one fish among a big fishbowl of fish dealing with some of the same things. And so we just ask God that you would move. Your word is anointed. May the anointing of your word go forth and break every chain. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 2 Timothy 1.7. We're going to just look at a couple scriptures here. 2 Timothy 1.7 says this here. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. Amen. Praise God. We just prayed for that for Anthony. Amen. Amen. We just rebuked that. And 1 John 4.18. For there is no fear in love. But perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. 1 Peter 5, 6 through 9 says, Therefore, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Casting all your cares, casting all your fear, casting all your anxiety, casting all your worries Upon him, for he cares for you. Verse 8, be sober, be, 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 <laughs> I was going to say, be vigilant, be, be vigilant, but that's not, that's not right. Be vigilant, okay, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him, stand fast in the faith. And then John 8, 36 the words of Jesus, therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. Aren't we so glad today that Jesus purchased our freedom from sin? He purchased our freedom from death. He purchased our freedom from fear. Amen? Amen. You know, and so we're going to talk a little bit about breaking the power of fear, breaking the spirit of fear. What is the, you know, what is the spirit of fear? You know, the Bible tells us that God is love. Amen? Anybody help, help, help me out this morning? Okay, we'll kind of move along a little quicker here. Uh, you know, the Bible tells us God is love. The essential nature of God is that he is love and that he desires to manifest his love. You know, he desires for each and every one of us to know and, ex and to experience the love of God. For there is a spirit of love that comes from what? 
It comes from God, and God wants us to experience that. He wants us to know it. Well, the, the Satan, his, I believe that his essential nature or his core nature is fear and deception. Fear and deception is the essential nature. Essentially, bottom line, Satan, uh, he's all about fear. He's all about deception. What is God all about? God is all about love and us experiencing God, experiencing that love. What is Satan all about? Is that he's all about fear and deception, and he wants to what? Bring us into fear, that we live in fear, that we experience fear. Amen? You know, just something to think about. Um, that can a, can a Christian, and this is, I, I hear lots of things, and maybe you hear lots of things. You listen to a lot of stuff on YouTube and whatever. Some of it's good, some of it's not. But can a Christian be under the influence of a spirit of fear? There's some who believe that you can't, which let me just tell you, you're wrong, Okay. Now, I'm not saying that a Christian can be possessed by a devil. We're not talking about that. We're talking about the essential nature of Satan and his presence on the world, in the world today, is to bring upon a spirit of fear. Matter of fact, Jesus said, referring to the last days, that men's hearts will grow, will fail. Okay? Men's hearts will, will fail them for what? Fear. You know, if COVID has, you know, COVID has revealed many things, right? Amen? But, if, but it is very, very obvious that one thing that COVID revealed, that, that we are subject to fear. That we are subject to fear. And, and it, it is a dominating, controlling sort of spirit, the spirit of fear. Regarding a Christian now, we're not talking, I'm not talking, I believe I'm talking to all Christians here today, so I'm talking to, so what we're talking about this morning is we're talking as it relates to believers, as it relates to Christians. The spirit of fear is intended in the life of a Christian to keep you from experiencing God, the fullness of what God has for you. The enemy does not want you to really experience God in his fullness. The spirit of fear in the life of a Christian is intended to, to keep you or to keep you from your destiny, from your purposes that God has planned and advanced long before you were ever born. Each and every one of us, God has divine purposes and plans, things that you and I are intended to do, and the spirit of fear will keep you from those things. Matter of fact, it's happening right now. It's happening all around Christ Christendom. It's all happening all around that, that lives of people are not, we're not entering to what God has for us because of the spirit of fear. It's like a spiritual paralysis. That's what fear is. It's like a spiritual paralysis. You know why? We're, we're paralyzed. We're, we're stuck. And, and we just kind of stay, stay where we are. And that's what the devil wants. The devil wants you to stay where you are. He doesn't want you to, to believe that God can use you in a greater way than what he's using you now. And so we'll settle to be content with what we have. And I'm kind of jumping ahead. And we're going to look at a, a very famous account in the Bible that speaks about this. The primary manifestations of the spirit of fear is the lack of trust in God, number one. If you struggle with really trusting God, it, that underlining under, under that is perhaps maybe a spirit of fear. Disobedience is another manifestation of the spirit of fear is disobedience. And God lays upon our hearts to, to, do, to do something, to go somewhere, and we do not. Because why? 
the spirit of fear rises up. Fear rises up. Fear that I might be rejected. Fear that I might fail. Fear that I will fall short. Have you ever felt that way when you, when you know that God has, when you know that God has spoke to your heart about sharing your faith with someone and yet you, you talk yourself out of it? Underlining that talking yourself out is the spirit of fear. Can I just be honest with you this morning? We give into the spirit of fear probably more than we give into the spirit of love. Because God moves in the realm of love. Satan moves in the realm of fear. We understand fear probably a lot more than we do love. Now, there is a biblical fear that we are to have, that we are to understand. There, there is the biblical fear, the fear of God. Amen? Amen. <laughs> I mean, that can save your life, the fear of God, all right? You know, absent of the fear of God can cost you your life, you know, if you're not careful. So disobedience, a lack of trust, anxiety, insecurities. Does any of these speak? Isolation. There is an element of the spirit of fear that is normal, Amen. We're, we're taught to, to fear a hot stove. Don't touch that stove. You told your kids not to touch it, but, but they touch it anyway, don't they? And then they learn what? The fear. The fear of a fire. There's an element of the spirit of fear that is good. It's needed as humans. And the spirit of fear... It, coincide of that the spirit of fear is a thief it is a thief in your life it will rob you and steal from you the things that God has that God has for you and the things that God has entrusted you in and so it's, it's going to be a little heavy this morning okay are we ready for it you might be thinking, well, you know, this message isn't for me, but maybe it's for someone you know. But I have a feeling it's probably for each and every one of us. I know it's for me. So if you've got your Bibles, turn to Numbers 13. I think we all know this kind of familiar numbers. And uh, we're going to look at a great, great account. I thought Jesse was going to go there, but then he, he went a little later. <laughs> He went a little bit later after, after uh, what we're going to talk about came upon the people of Israel. Hello. It's the account, remember the account of the 12 spies going into to the promised land. Okay. Ten of them, just to summarize it, we're not going to read the whole thing. To summarize it, ten, ten of them come back. And let me just be honest, they came back full of fear. They came back full of fear. And then, of course, we know that two came back, and they were full of what? Faith. Yeah. Their thought was, hey, we're, we can do this. The thought of the other ten said, no, we, we can't do this. And they come up with all kinds of of reasons why we're going to look at a few of them in just a moment but it's something to keep in something that is very much overlooked in this account sometimes is is the 12 you know we might conclude by how they came back and how they reported that that 10 of them were like unbelievers and 10 of them were believers but do you know that actually if you read the account carefully you will see that each one of these were heads of their family, of the 12 tribes. Matter of fact, they were the cream of the crop. <laughs> I mean, these are the ones that, you know, like people rallied to, people listened to, people followed. These were the heads of the tribes. <laughs> Which tells me this, every single one of us is subject to fear. In the grip, in the power that fear can have, and how it can change a destiny of people. 
It changed the lives of two to three million people. Fear. And I believe with all my heart that not only is there a spirit of fear that is individual, deals with us on an individual basis, that you deal with it from day to day, but I believe that even the church has come upon a spirit of fear. That there's a spirit of fear that, you know, we just got to hang over here and just, you know, let's not be too aggressive. Let's not put it out there. You know, let's not believe God too much or we're going to let the people down and so on and so on and so on. So we just huddle in our four walls. <laughs> we huddle in our four walls and we get comfortable. So we're going to look at just a, a few things, a few, a few things about fear, and <clears throat> especially as it relates to this account. I believe it's uh, just apropos for what we're dealing with today. Matter of fact, uh, I had a, I had a, I, I, the Lord speaks in different ways. Sometimes he speaks to us in impressions, and sometimes you see pictures. Sometimes you, there's a phrase that he speaks to us. Oftentimes the Lord speaks to me in like a picture. I just kind of see a picture, and, and, um, and, and the picture was, and I know this is going to kind of really, really kind of freak you out. You're going to say, ah, no, that wasn't God. That's you. That's the devil. You know, rebuke the devil and so forth. But, but what I saw was I saw, I saw a church, and I saw around the church a cage. In Numbers 13, verses 23, we're going to start reading there. Then they came, the 12, okay? Moses already sent them out. Okay, guys, go check out the land. <laughs> you know, you know? I, I kind of think, you know, Moses, maybe you should have just skipped that. <laughs> this is go, okay? But th th that wasn't God's plan, right? Okay? So they came to the valley of Iskol, and there cut down a branch with one cluster of grapes. They carried it between the two of them on a pole. Uh, have you ever seen a cluster of grapes like that? I mean, I mean, you go to Sam's, they got some pretty good-sized grapes there. My wife loves grapes. My gosh, I mean, I, I spent a fortune in grapes, okay? She loves them, okay? I, I'm not particularly fond of them, but, but they, some of those grapes are what? They're the size of golf balls, almost, sometimes, okay? And, like, they grab the cluster of grapes, and it required two men to carry that. I mean, just get a picture of that. Praise God, man. Just That was just grapes. And then they also brought some of the pomegranates and the figs, and, and the place was called the Valley of Iskol because of the cluster which the men of Israel cut down there, and they returned from spying out the land after 40 days. Now they departed and came back to Moses and Aaron and all the congregation of the people of Israel in the wilderness of Paran at Kadesh. They brought back word to them and to all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. Then they told him, told Moses, each one, and he went, that we went to the land where you sent us. It truly flows with milk and milk. Honey. Now, think about this here. Twelve men, they go to the same place. <laughs> they see the same things. They're, on, they're, they're sent for the same purpose, and yet isn't it amazing that ten of them see something totally different? Ten of them see what? They come back with fear. They come back with, you know, and, and we'll read that, okay, as we go, go along. But two, come back. And don't you just love Joshua and Caleb? Don't you just love them? Come on. Don't you just love Joshua and Caleb? I mean, these guys, man, these, these are men of God. The other ten, you know, they, <laughs> they're, I don't know what they are. I think they're boys of God maybe, okay? 
But anyway, but 10 of them come back, and, and, and they got a sour report. Two of them come back. What is the difference? Let me tell you what the difference is. Listen to this here. We see things not as they are. Listen, I'm saying something. You need to hear this. We see things not as they are. We see things as we are. You understand that difference? See? When we look at things, we don't, we don't always look at things as we see them. We interpret them to what? To, to how we are, what we are, how we see them. You know, if you have a, if you're a hopeful person, you know, just by nature, you know, how, how many people are here, don't raise your hand, you can raise it if you want to, how, how many are like hopeful? You're a hopeful person. Then most likely you will see things, various things, you'll likely see them in a hopeful what? Way. Oh, I went to the doctor, and he told me, and he told me this. Oh. But if you're kind of a hopeful person, then you would say, well, yeah, okay, that's. I'm not going to say that. You're going to say, oh, that's cool. I'm glad. But you're going to, your perspective of it is going to be different than, say, how many of us are kind of like negative? At, at our core, we're kind of negative. You know, we, can't, we don't see the good. We, we typically what? We see the bad. And so, and so if you're a negative sort of person, when something happens, good or bad, you interpret it what? Not for what you, what you see. You interpret it from what? From, the, from who you are. If, you, if you're a trusting person, you will what? Trust people. But if you're not a trusting person, guess what? <laughs> you're not going to trust anybody, and even trusting God is a task. This kind of kind of how we are. If we're a fearful person, then we're going to what? We're not going to see things. Not as they are, we're going to see things from what? From who we are. And if we're a fearful person, then it's always going to be what? Fear. We're going to see that in, in, the, in the light of fear. That, that's the filter. Two of them came back and said, yay, the land is great. Now, they also saw other things. Okay. But that's not what they reported, was it? Two of them come back and say, "Woo, man, that land is great. Look at these grapes. Look at some of these pomegranates. Look at these figs. Ten of them came back and said, oh, but, 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 uh, uh, you know. And so let's go down and look at, look at verse 28, okay? Now, Caleb, he speaks up and says, man, look at this. Look at this cluster of grapes. It took two of us to carry this here. Verse 28, nevertheless, <laughs> it's like you just know something ain't going to come out good out of that. You know, it's like the word but. But, you know, how many, <laughs> how many are tempted to say, you know, you get that bad report from the doctor, you know, and say, so, you know, well, you know, you know, I, I believe, I believe, but all of a sudden there comes the but in hand, you know. I guess that they became the first butt heads, didn't they? Those 10 of them, right? Nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land, they're strong. Their cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, it's like they just add a little bit more to this. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak there. Nevertheless, but, you know, the spirit of fear causes us not to see things as, we, as they are. But we see things as we are. Fear takes the positive and turns it into a but. Fear takes the positive and turns it into a negative. 
verse 30 through 32. Then Caleb quieted the people. He must have been just a pretty strong man. What do you think? Then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, let us, let us go up at once and take possession. For we are well able to overcome it. But the men, a.k.a. buttheads, who had gone up with him said, we are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they gave the children of Israel, listen to this, a bad report. What does Caleb say? Caleb says, we can go. Caleb says, man, it's, it's, it's there for the taking. Did he, see, did he see the cities? Sure he did. Sure he did. Did he see the fortified cities? Yeah, he did. He saw their walls. He saw the descendants of Anak. He saw giants. He saw how big they are and how many they are. But he says what? Let's go now. And they had the 10. says, no. You know, one way to... And we're going to be talking a little bit about in just a few moments about breaking this spirit this morning. That's how we're going to end this, okay? But just, just want to lay just a few things out for us. You know, one from this story, one way to break the spirit, this spirit, is hang around some Caleb's. <laughs> Who you hang around with? You hang around... Buttheads. Come on. You know, oh, I believe that God is leading me. I believe that God is speaking to my heart to, to, to get involved in this ministry. You tell that to the wrong person, they'll tell you, well, I don't think that. Now, if that you have a hard enough time convincing yourself that, right? God is telling you, you know, I just don't want you to sit on a pine anymore, but I want you to take your place in the house of God. And the spirit of fear or someone else will have a way of just nullifying that, right? We need to hang around with the camp of the camp of faith. We need to hang around people of faith. People who believe that when God God is leading you to do something that you know he'll not only lead you but he'll provide for you. No matter what you see. Oh, this is bigger than me. Let me just tell you right now, if what God is leading you in isn't bigger than you, then it's not God. <laughs> yeah, I'm just telling you, if you don't need to trust God, for his strength, his provision, his wisdom, and whatever else, the gifts, whatever, in order for you to do what God has called you to do, then you're not trusting God. It's not God. God is always going to take you someplace that's beyond you. <laughs> and God was taking Israel beyond them, and yet fear kept them where they were. Fear will keep you where you are. Oh, I can't do that. Oh, no, no. You know, everything I try to do, I fail at. I'm not good at anything. And I believe with all my heart that we're living in an hour that God, God is, is, is really, he's, he's sending out the assignments. He's sending out the assignments. And let me tell you, remember this, what we're talking about this morning. When God speaks to your heart about doing this, doing something for him that is perhaps maybe beyond your ability, beyond your faith, beyond where you are. And do not allow the fear, the fear of failure in the past, the fear of rejection, fear all, you know, on and on and on. God, get around the people of faith, get around those that say, yes, you can do this. Man, that's exciting. 
I believe, yes, I believe that God can do this through you. I believe that God is speaking to your heart, and he has laid this assignment upon your heart. Go for it. Go for it with all your heart. Your fear causes us just to do that. Fear also, you know, often here it exaggerates the problem. <laughs> how, how many just love to exaggerate sometimes? You know, I mean, listen to this, this exaggeration. There we saw the giants. The descendants of Anak came from the giants. And we looked like grasshoppers. <laughs> In our sight, and they go on, and so we were in their sight. Not only do I view myself as a grasshopper, they view me as a grasshopper. <laughs> I mean, what hope? What hope is there? I mean, a little bit of a I mean, these were men. These were warriors. <laughs> I mean, these were the tr 12 heads of Israel. You begin to exaggerate the problem because fear will do that. Fear will exaggerate it. Oh, and, 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 and you know, how many, how many, how many hypochondriacs we got in the house today? Nobody raised their hand. I guess I'm the only one. <laughs> okay, you know, I go to the doctor. He tells me this. Oh, I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm dead tomorrow. <laughs> you know, something like that. Fear. You know, fear recalls us just to, oh, I'm just going to retire. I'm just going to just give it up, rest, take it easy, sit on the rocking chair, grow a beard. You know, fear is a terrible thing. Do you, do you see what's going on here in this? I want you to, Keep this in mind. Two months prior to this. Two months. Not 20 years. Not 200 years. Okay. Two months, not two months have gone by when they saw the Red Sea. <laughs> Not a crick, the Red Sea. They saw the plagues, the power of God. They saw the power of God come upon the, the mightiest army in the world at that time. Egypt brought to its knees, which is a type of Satan, Pharaoh, Egypt, brought to his knees, brought to their knees. And here they are, two months later, after they witnessed all those things, and they see a couple of big guys. There's a little bit of obstacle. A little bit of a, a challenge that lays before you and your destiny, and we fall in fear and failure. It happens every single day in the church. I believe there's no doubt we're living in the last days. For that verse that I quoted was verses that Jesus said that will occur in the last days, for men's hearts will fail for fear. And men, men and women of God who should be taking their place in the house of God and fulfilling their destiny and purpose of God, they're falling for fear. Fear and intimidation and disobedience. <laughs> oh. Well, we should be what? We should be marching in. We remain in the wilderness. You know what was at stake? You know what really happened here because of fear? They spent 40 years in the wilderness. How many of you have spent some time in the wilderness? Now you can raise your hand. I have. Is it fun? 
But do you know why you were in that wilderness? Because God will not take you from one place to the next unless you what? Deal with what you're dealing with now. Forty years later, they came right back to the same place they were. Minus a whole bunch of mamas and daddies and granddaddies and grandmamas. You wonder how many times we know that everyone, what, under 20, didn't, didn't, was under the curse. Everyone o- over 20, what, perished. Is that, is that right? Perished in the wilderness. You just wonder that children wh- who were born to moms and dads who were, who were destined to die in the wilderness, you just wonder what the kids said. Mommy, Daddy, why are we in the wilderness? Our children should be asking us, what's wrong with the church today? Our children should be asking, why is the church so messed up, so weak? And you wonder why they're not here. Open your eyes. That's why they're not here. Oh, but when we're operating in faith, it is contagious, just like fear is contagious. It is. Fear is contagious. Numbers 14, 1 through 3, it says this here. So all the congregation, listen to, (laughs) lifted up their voices and cried, And wept. Oh God, why you brought us here? Well, that sounds like us sometimes. I mean, some of our prayer meetings are about about as, as pitiful as this little gathering here. Our prayer meetings should be what? We stand in faith and belief, declaring the victory, declaring the power of God. I'm not talking about all the things that we're not able to do and all the things that we did in the past. And <laughs> it's like everything happened 20 years ago. He says that the people wept that night, and all the children of Israel began to complain against Moses and Aaron. The whole congregation. Notice the whole congregation. I don't know. I mean, a couple million people, maybe. <laughs> the whole congregation. Could you imagine that? I mean, if I had Moses, I, I just. That had been it. See you later. Okay? If only we have died in the land of Egypt. If only we died. You know, you know, Pharaoh, you know, you know, at least he gave us a little bit of food. You know, we had to make a whole bunch of bricks. You know, we had to build his pillars and build his pythons and pyramids and all that kind of stuff, you know. But, wow, if only we had died in the land. If only we have died in the wilderness. If only, the, and they might as well just went on and said, well, my, uh, uh, Lord, just send the Red Sea on us. We're halfway in there. I know you tricked us. You got us in here halfway in the Red Sea. Just let the Red Sea come down on us. Oh, if only we have died in the wilderness. Why has God brought us to this land so that we could just simply fall by the sword, that our wives and children should become victims? Would it not have been better for us to return to Egypt? Wow. What a picture. What can we take away from this account? Let me just tell you. I want you to hear this. That you can never let fear decide your future. Because if you do, you have no future. It'll be be something else. It'll be so much less, so much what God than what has for you. So how do we, how do we, gonna, how, how are we going to turn this around? I want to share just a, a c- couple things about defeating faith. Now, these are going to be a little bit different. Then I want to give you, then we're going to pray. We're going to just deal with this spirit this morning. People of fear, people who are given to fear, you know they have short memories. I mentioned earlier about two, not only two, 
two months have gone by, and what did they see? They saw miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle. They saw the mighty hand of God just fall. And yet people of fear, we forget. We forget. We forget the faithfulness of God, the goodness of God, the mercy of God. We forgot, you know, we forget all those times that what he, he, he answered and he supplied the need. How many times that he had healed our bodies and we're, and we're convinced that this time, yes, it's the death sentence. I'm gone. I'm history. Call the funeral home. Make arrangements. How could they forget? Think about it for a second. How could the whole people of Israel, how could they forget? Now, there was a couple of them, just a couple. And I'm sure Moses and Aaron, they must have been sitting there just like, oh, Jesus, Jesus. How could they forget? Isn't it amazing? But how many of us here, we so quickly forget the goodness of God? God speaks upon your heart and challenges you or he's setting you up for something and he wants to take you in a new direction, a new ministry, whatever, 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 you know, and then all of a sudden, you know, no, no, I can't do that, I can't do that. And yet we can look back on all the, and how he's just led our steps up to this point. And all of a sudden we just, our hearts fail for fear. I mean, you know that God has done some amazing things in each of our lives, amen, <laughs> you know? And we, should, we, we need to remember these things. You know, we replace fear by remembering the past and allowing what God has done to strengthen our faith for what's ahead. You know, faith causes us to remember. We remember the goodness of God. We remember the power. Oh, if God can do this, if God did that, then he what? He will do this. <laughs> if God can take us from Egypt and slavery and bondage, God can take us into the promised land where there's freedom and liberty. Amen. Come on, don't forget what God has done done for you, when he begins to, you know, begin to push you out of the nest that you're in. Can someone hear that this morning? Some of you are in a nest. You've nested. And it's, it's really good. Someone come, someone comes and feeds you. Oh, they come and they listen to your woes. They listen to all the stuff that's going on in your life. Yeah, I could just imagine sometimes the conversations between mama bird and the baby bird. Can you just imagine the conversations that's going on? I'm getting tired of bringing this worm to you. Pretty soon... I'm going to kick you out of the nest. I'm tired of hearing you. God, 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 come and clean this up. God, come and fix this. God, come and do this. God, 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 God. And God is saying, I want to use you. Man up, grow up, be the, become the person I want you to be. Don't allow the fear I imagine the first time that the baby bird was kicked out of the nest, it went, ah! And then all of a sudden, it what? <laughs> it started flapping. Oh, let God, are you in a nest this morning? God spoke that to my heart the other day. He says, Pat, you're in a nest. You need to get out of your nest. I'm going to kick you out of that nest. Because I got... I got things for you. You know, the devil's been telling me that God's done with me. And I've been believing it. This is not a pity party. You know, I got a couple blood, blood clots. Retina scarring in one eye. and got a big cataract in the other eye. And all of you are fuzzy. So I don't know if you're happy. I don't know if you're mad. So I guess it don't really matter, right? Okay. 
And I'm just convinced, but what's next? Fear, fear never, never leaves. It always looking for an oil, always looking for a way to get in. Can't forget what God has done. Can't forget what, what God has done for you. When God is taking you to that new place, when God is speaking to your heart and say, "Son, I got something else for you." Oh, but God, no, 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 God, you got the wrong person. Oh, how, how, oh, we're really good at that, aren't we? Oh, no, 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 God, I just kind of like doing nothing. No. We don't do nothing in the kingdom of God. If you're a king's kid, you don't do nothing. God's got something for all of us, but fear will keep you from it. Because most likely it's beyond your abilities, beyond what God has given you naturally. So number one, we can't forget the past. We can't forget the goodness of God. Second of all, like I mentioned, I just said, we can't settle for the status quo. We've got to get out of the nest. Fear recalls you just to stay put. You know, I'll just stay where I'm at. You know, it's kind of comfortable. You know, you, know, you know, people, I have talked to people who have you know, retired and whatever, whatever, and, you know, who who've stayed in a, stayed in a job that they hated for 40 years. <laughs> you know why they stayed in a job for 40 years that they hated? Because they were, what? They were afraid to make a move. Settle for the status quo. Now, I'm not speaking against anyone who knows what God has called them to do and they worked a career for 40 years. Praise God, because you'd end it, you know. But many times we just stay put. We stay in that present situation to believe whatever lies ahead is more than what I can do. And, and by faith, we believe that God is leading us on. I believe God is leading us, church, onward, leading you onward. And we need to break this spirit of fear that comes upon us so often. And it's so crippling. It's so devastating. It renders the church powerless. Anybody know what I'm talking about this morning? Fear will rob you of your future. Fear will rob you from the good, perfect, pleasing will of God. I hope you're just not settled, just being saved. That's good enough for me, just being saved. No, no, God's got so much for you. But fear will keep you in your pleasant. Fear will just keep you in that place. Fear tells you that that things will never change. Fear tells us it'll never work out. So we're going to break this power today. Can you just stand to your feet? I'm going to share with you just a couple things. You don't need to write them down. If you need want to write them down, then watch this, watch this again. Okay? I think some of you need to listen to this again. If you know someone who is dealing with, dealing with this, then send them the link. Send them to Facebook and say, hey, listen to this. You need to listen to this. Not because of me. I'm not anything special. God makes us all special. Amen? Amen. But we're going to break. We're going to break the spirit of fear. I need it broken over my life. I believe it. I did it this morning. But I believe it's something that I don't want to detour too much, but anyone, you need to understand about f familiar spirits. In a spirit of fear, someone's not happy up there. So, amen. Praise God. Uh, a familiar spirit doesn't mean that you're possessed by a demon or anything like that. But it's, a, it's, it's, it's an area like fear that just never seems to go away. And you deal with it, you, you get rid of it, but a week later, bam, it comes back again. People with addictions oftentimes are, that's the reason why many have a, many with addictions are really crippled by a spirit of fear. Why? Because it continues to come back on them. Because there's a spirit of fear attached to their addictions. This, this is a familiar spirit. 
It is not one that's just going, that we're just going to rebuke and cast out and say, oh, I'm free from it, and then you're free for the rest of your life. And you need to hear this. But I'm telling you the truth, okay, from experience, from also from what the Word of God teaches. A familiar spirit, it will, it will seek to come back. And many times it does come back because it's a familiar thing that your, your, your fallen nature, whatever, welcomes, even though the Spirit of God in you rejects it. And so this is something that you're going to have to do many times. Many familiar spirits, you just can't, you know, we pray for someone to be set free from pornography. We pray for someone to be set free of this and that. And then we say, okay, you're free, now go, <laughs> and whatever. And then a week later, we find them in the bar. Why? Because it's a familiar spirit. So it needs to be, it's, there's an ongoing spiritual battle that you're going to have to fight with. But let me just tell you, victory will come. I promise you, victory will come. But you must understand that the spirit of fear is an ongoing battle that you will that you will have to deal with. And I'm going to share with you four or five things that I have written down that will, that will bring about the victory in your life over the spirit of fear. Okay, not because I, I, I walk in it all the time, but because I just know this is, this is from God's word. Number one, we break the power of that by embracing the power of the cross. Okay, number one. So if you're dealing with this, then we embrace the power of the cross right now because at the power of the cross... Sin, disease, sickness, Satan, fear, what it all, what? It all was broken. Jesus defeated, and we stand in the victory of Jesus through by what? Through declaring the power of the cross upon our lives. So that's the first thing we're going to do right now. Come on, lift your hand to the Lord. Father God, I declare the power, the power of the cross that it, 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 it applies to my life. Jesus, you not, only, you not only broke the power of sin and death and eternal hell, but you broke the spirit of fear, God, that comes, uh, that comes upon us, oh God, to, to just enable us, to, to cripple us, to, to paralyze us, God, to keep us, to keep us in a place where, God, you don't want us to be. You want us to move on. And so we stand right now in the power of the cross, and I receive the power of the cross of Jesus Christ on my behalf that breaks the curse of this right now in Jesus' name. Okay, that's number one. The second thing, now listen to me, the power of God's word. The power of God's word. You need to begin to start speaking God's word. Now, I shared with you in the beginning. Why did I share those verses at the beginning? Because these are critical verses, and there's others. But those, let me remind you, 2 Timothy 1, 7, you need to speak this over your life. For God has not given me a spirit of fear. Let me tell you who will give you a spirit of fear. <laughs> Devil, okay? God has not given me a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. And 1 John 4, 18, okay, it says what? There is no fear, and God does not give us fear, okay? Amen? That fear comes from, and there's no fear in God's love, but perfect love, the love of Jesus. So, so what I want you to do, I want you to read the scriptures out, and then I want you to apply the love of God over your life. Amen? So we're going to do that right now. Come on, let's lift our hands. Father, I speak these scriptures right now over us. For, for God, you have not given your children, your people, God, a spirit of fear, but God, you have given us power and love and a sound mind. God, there, you you are love. You are love. The perfect love, it drives out fear because fear has to do with torment and punishment. And God, you want to bless bless me. Therefore, God, if you set me free, Jesus, you set me free, I am free. And I ask right now to be poured out, God, your love from, from the top of my head, God, down to the soles of my feet, and God, that you would wash out, Lord God, that spirit of fear that has, that has found its way into my heart and my spirit. In Jesus' name, amen? Okay, that's number two. Let me give you the third one. Now, like I say, I want you to Watch this video again. That's the reason why I'm having you stand and do this right now. All right. We need to pray. We need to pray and ask him. We need to repent. <laughs> and we need to confess. All right. Now you say, well, why do I need to do that? Because 
Because a spirit of fear is not God's will for your life, okay? It is not. God's will is peace and joy and righteousness in the Holy Ghost, okay? And so, so I want you to pray a prayer of, 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 of Lord, I, I repent, I repent, and I confess, God, this. God already knows, but you're going to do it anyway. So come on, let's pray together. Father God, I come to you and I confess, God. God, I have given in. Lord, that I'm weak in this area, but God, I ask you, God, to strengthen me right now in the name of Jesus. God, your word says that I'm to be strong, to be strong in God. Lord, strengthen me right now. And so, Father, I make confession, God, that I am weak, but God, you are strong. And God, I pray, God, that you would help me to walk, to walk in obedience, God, and to walk in trust in you. And God, from this moment, I trust you, God, that I am free. I trust you, O oh God. I trust you, O oh God, that you've heard my prayer and heard my cry in Jesus' name. And then lastly, declare the victory. Speak the victory. That's the fourth thing. Speak out, and we're going to speak the victory right now. Every, one, every single one of us, I just want you to speak out the victory. Say, I am free. Come on. I am free. Now, come on. Now, lift it up to the Lord. Say, Lord, I thank you, God. I receive it right now, and I walk in the victory, God, that you have in me, the victory in Jesus, and I declare that I am free. I am free. I am free from the spirit of fear. Oh, God, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, whom you set free, God, is free indeed. Oh, God. Oh, God, I thank you for the freedom. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on. Now, let me just tell you, those four things you may, you may have to do every single day. If you need to do it every day, do it every day. Okay? If it takes you 30 days, if it takes you 60 days, I promise you on the basis of the authority of God's word. Not my authority. I don't have any authority other than the authority of God's word to, to speak this out to you this morning. That if you will believe this, believe in the power of the cross that breaks all sin, all, all chains, all bonds, amen? It breaks them all, not some of them, all. Even this terrible spirit of fear that robs God, it robs God's people and it robs his church. Can I just tell you? It does. The spirit of fear robs God's people and it robs his church. Amen? <laughs> okay? Declare the power of the cross. Speak the word of God over you. Speak the power of God's word. Receive that love of, and wash you. Let him just wash you. Declare your trust and your dependence and your confession upon him. Amen. If you need to repent because you gave in to it, then just repent. Amen. Amen. Just like when we sin, what do we do? We repent and confess it. So if you give in to fear, don't sit there and, oh, this doesn't work for me. Oh, no, 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 no. It works for everybody else. It works for great people. No, it works. Just repent of God, forgive me. Forgive me into it. Lord, right now, God, I see, I receive the power and forgiveness and the grace and <laughs> of, your, of your love. And begin to speak the victory. Amen. Begin to speak the victory. Hallelujah. Let's just lift our hands as we close in prayer. Father, we just, we just thank you today, God. God, I know that maybe this isn't, you know, <laughs> the usual Sunday morning topic, but God, I believe, God I, God, I believe with all my heart, God, that you are, you are setting us up. He's set, just like he was setting Israel up. Oh, oh, doesn't th th your heart just break for those people who never saw the promised land? And my heart breaks for people who, who, who just give in to this, these, these spirits and just never find what God has for them. Oh, God, thank you. Oh, God, thank you, thank you. We're all acceptable. I'm acceptable. I'm, I'm receptive to it. I'm still a man. I'm still weak in many ways. Oh, but God is strong. Lean upon him. Lean upon Jesus. Trust him for your deliverance. Trust him for the victory. And we praise you for it. Now, God, bless your people as we leave today.
Bless them, oh God. Lord, that we are blessed of God. Come on, say that with me. I am blessed. I am blessed of God. Highly favored of him. I'm his child. He loves me. Oh, hallelujah. We thank you for it. Jesus' name. Amen. Now share that with someone before you leave. Amen. God, God bless you. Just turn to somebody and just share that with them. Amen.